the, the problem with the middle class is most people earn income. And the, from the, the IRS perspective, income is the highest taxed, mm-hmm. right? That's the highest tax rate is your income. Like even capital, like long-term capital gains. Yeah. Lower. Yeah, long-term capital gains are more favorable. Real estate has depreciation and other things that are more favorable. Passive income is more favorable, Mm -hmm. right? Passive income, uh, you don't pay the employment tax on it, right? Right. So that's more favorable. So the the least favorable income is earned income. Hmm. That's the issue, right? So, So when you start to take income and defer taxes on it and buy assets at the same time, you are, in fact, at least in theory, improving the value. Hmm. Okay. So that's one of the things that you say. And generically, you know, everybody's circumstance is different. We can't give advice on air, but I can tell you buying assets tends to work out. Unless you suck at buying assets and you buy stuff that's overvalued. Yeah. Or you only buy, or you buy emotionally and sell emotionally. So you buy when things are high because you think that it feels good at that time. And when it's low, you freak out and sell. And so you do the opposite of what you need to do. You're not, if you're not disciplined, yeah. Right. And so that's why there's ways to go about this to improve your strategy outcomes. But, you know, we, we digress. The, the, we're still back to buy the assets. But it's also why, like, owning real estate tends to be the way wealthy people accumulate wealth, right? If you think about it, there's only two things that people do to accumulate massive amounts of wealth. What are the two things that you can do to be more profitable, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a secret if you listen to the show for a no, long time. Right. Scarcity and leverage. Oh, I was okay. going to say sell your soul. But. Yeah, so it's like that. Mm. Scarcity, remember, <laughs> that's the idea that you can do something nobody else can. Professional athletes are a good example, right? They get paid okay. because they do the things that nobody else can, and they do, and it's something people want to watch. Mm-hmm. So, right, so you, but they also are doing something that kind of parlays into the other, leverage. The idea of leverage is that you are making effort off of somebody else's effort too. Mm-hmm. Leverage is the idea that if you or, or the one too many relationship, right? I can do the work one time and many, many people buy it. OK, uh, the, the, the thing about the modern day trades and this is they make a really good living, but you have to do the trade and the service happens one at a time. You're fixing one AC unit at a time or one plumbing job at a time, one electrical job at a time versus being able to be playing a basketball game, one game, but. 40,000 people are watching it and advertisers are getting a little piece of each of the 40,000 eyeballs, right? And so they're leveraging that up and you're getting paid a lot for, for doing a scarce thing that lots of people want to see. Yeah. Right. So that's the thing is, can you get a small piece of something a million times or do you get one piece that's worth a million? I don't know, but those are the, the two pathways here. So uh, it, it comes into play for the middle class too, by the way, because if we think about how we're talking about buying assets. The other thing is start to get a handle on tax code. Mm-hmm. I really encourage people to look into operating, even if it's a side hustle, looking at your running your own business, because it enables you to use the tax code more. Right. And the IRS is very clear that they, uh, they preference businesses and they, they preference real estate ownership. But that makes sense because they want to incentivize people to start a business because sure. if that business gets up, it gets going and is making money, guess what? They make more money, tax revenue. Right? Yeah. And so, well, and and it's economically useful for them, mm-hmm. but, but consider that well, the, you the, want soaring GDP, right. you want, <laughs> you want products to be produced. But, but here's an interesting example. Okay. Let's say like, the, like kind of a real life example. You're in a service business and you are trying to convince somebody to become a customer. So you take them out to lunch to talk business. You buy lunch. Okay. That lunch is a business expense right now. Okay. Now I'm not telling you how to do your taxes, but I'm just telling you, think about the idea that because we are conducting business together, we can write that lunch off as an operation of business. You have to do the proper documentation for it. But when you write that off, if your business earns $100, but $50 was spent on a lunch, then the business deducts the $50 from the gross earnings of 100. What's left? There's $50 left. That's what the IRS sees as the profit. Mm-hmm. So the tax is on the $50 that's left, not the $100 that walked in the door. It's what's left after the business has to expense out the operating components, right? So that's the the big issue at play here is the businesses buy stuff that they need. Okay. But oftentimes a lot of your life is at work. 
right? And so true. a lot of your life, like if you were going to eat lunch anyway, and you can have a working lunch, now you just, you didn't have to take that money, pay taxes on it, and then buy lunch afterwards. You got to use the money before it was taxed to buy lunch. It stretches the dollar further, right? I More like mileage it. with the existing money, right? And so I encourage all people, like the middle class, it gets squeezed a lot because there's no way to write off additional taxes. The harder you work, the more incremental dollars show up. And a lot of taxes are regressive in nature. Okay. And I'm not really throwing rocks at that per se, except there's things that we forget are taxes, right? Oh, you got to get your vehicle registered and you got to, you know, pay for all the cell phone fees and stuff like all those little things that get added up. Every gallon of gas has, you know, like most people use about the same amount gallons of gas, whether they're wealthy or not. But the gas tax is built in. It's flat relative mm-hmm. to the tax. Yeah. And you can argue both ways. Well, we use the same amount. Why should we be taxed different? I agree. But keep in mind that we have a progressive tax scale for income. The more money you earn, the more your taxes go up. This, by the way, is why really wealthy people oftentimes don't take incomes. Right? This will mess with people's heads. But like, if you're Elon Musk, you got a whole bunch of company stock. You go to a bank, pledge it as collateral, you take a loan out, and you got to pay interest on it, but you've got stock that's appreciating at a faster rate than the interest rate the bank charges you. And so you don't have to pay taxes on a loan. That's not income. So you go put $100 million of Tesla stock in a bank, take $100 million out, and you got $100 million in your pocket. Got to pay the interest on it, and you got to pay it back at some point, right? But you could actually take that $100 million and go invest in an asset that grows it from $100 million to $150 million, pay the bank back, and keep the $40,000 or $40 million, like we don't pay $10 million in interest, keep $40 million as a capital gain instead of income tax. Cheaper taxes. Ingenious. Right? So that's how wealthy people generate wealth. Now, here's what I will tell you. There may not be a magic silver bullet for everybody out there, but there may be some things that you are not doing, okay? And this is part of where financial advisors can bring some value to the table, Mm -hmm. okay? So if you're not working with somebody, it may be worth uh, doing some interviews and talking to somebody or at least doing your homework to find out, are there more things I could do to save money on taxes and push my dollars further? How do they reach us, Matt, if they don't have somebody and they want to talk to us? Yeah, give us a call, 541-375-0898, or just go to the website and chat us, Little John Financial. So, yeah. Yeah, if you go to littlejohnfs.com, uh, and you can also text that number that Matt gave you. Yeah, 541 so All of those are good ways. 0898. It's, it's not going to cost you anything, right, to, to, to find out. And, and again, if it's not us, it doesn't have to be us. Find somebody that you like, somebody you trust, somebody you can work with. Uh, if you're not going to do it yourself. But look, we're out of time for now. So uh, if you got future questions, put them in the comments or uh, send them to info at littlejohnfs.com. But we got to run. I'm Dave Littlejohn. And Matt Dixon. Thanks for tuning in to True Wealth on News Radio 93.9 FM and 1240 KQEN.